Here is Lee Kessler's graph for the general compressibility factor. Along the x-axis is the reduced pressure, and along the y-axis is the compressibility factor. These lines that curve between are the reduced temperature values. The reduced pressure and reduced temperature values are used to normalize the pressure and temperature of a given gas with respect to their critical pressure and temperatures. The following equations are found in section 3-7 in the textbook. The numerator pressure and temperature is usually given with a problem. The critical pressure and critical temperature values can be found on table A-1. Let's look at example 3-11 part B from the textbook. Here are our givens that will be substituted back into the equation. On table A-1, we will find refrigerant and note the critical pressure and temperature values. These are put back into the equation and solved for the reduced pressure and reduced temperature values. To determine the compressibility factor, find where these values intersect on the chart. Let's start off with the reduced temperature of 0.863. On the chart, note that the reduced temperature values curve and then straighten as it gets closer to the y-axis. We first look at the major grid lines and find where our values fall in between. Our reduced temperature is between 0.85 and 0.9. Then use a ruler to estimate where our reduced temperature is along the widest spot. Because these major grid lines are straight, finding 0.863 is relatively straightforward. Follow the trend of the line as it begins to curve. If our reduced temperature was, let's say 1.4, we would place the ruler along the widest part of the curve between 1.3 and 1.5, locate 1.4, and then extend the 1.4 curve along the trend of the major grid lines. Finding the reduced pressure is simpler because you only need to find where it lies along the x-axis in the logarithmic scale and then trace along the y-axis upwards with a ruler. In our example, 0.246 is between the grid lines of 0.2 and 0.3. The x-axis also notes the halfway point 0.25. Since 0.46 is close to halfway, we know that our reduced pressure line almost touches this halfway point. We then extend this line to find where it intersects with the reduced temperature line. Remember that the x-axis is in the logarithmic scale and follow the x-axis guidelines as closely as possible. The intersection can then be found right here. We will now trace from this point to the y-axis to get our compressibility factor value. Here we see that the compressibility factor is 0.84. To finish the equation, recall that the compressibility factor equals the actual specific volume divided by the ideal specific volume. The ideal gas assumption is used with the givens to determine the ideal specific volume. From this, we rearrange the equation to get the actual specific volume.